All right, guys, good morning, YouTube. So today we're gonna do another vlog, day in the life type video. So I have to go renew my driver's license, but I'm gonna renew it outside of the city. Trying to renew your driver's license in Montreal takes forever. If I wanna make an appointment today, the earliest I can get is probably August or September. If I really wanted to get it renewed in time, I have to go outside of the city and get it renewed over there because the wait times are not that long. I just have to go to Trois-Rivières to get it renewed. It's about a hundred or so kilometers away, so it's gonna be a little road trip that we can take. And while we're there, we can just explore the city and see what they have. All right, so enough talking. Let's go to the car and then we can drive all the way to Trois-Rivières. So this is the road trip we're gonna take. It's gonna be about 144 kilometers. We're gonna get there in one hour, 30 minutes. And yeah, so it's just a little mini road trip. Don't think I'll need battery because I'm gonna arrive there with 44% and we're currently at 81%. Um, so maybe this will be a good trip to either bring the battery down completely and try and test out a supercharger and see if we can max out the actual charging speeds um, on our way back obviously if we do go back to a supercharger it will probably be this one to max it out because this one has 250 kilowatts and our car can go from uh, 170 so if we want to really test out the max we would go to uh, this one right here but we'll see first things first is go to Trois Rivières and then from there we'll see what we do when we get there All right, so we're on our way to Trois Rivières and I forgot to mention that there is a big charging parking lot over there. Um, I did go there once when I went there earlier this year, but since I'm making a YouTube video this time, I will be going there again and we'll be looking at all the different chargers they have over there. It's pretty cool. Um, and also what we'll do, we'll probably go to Best Buy, see what we can get, because I do need some a few things and hopefully Best Buy have those things available because um, I've never been to a Best Buy at Trois-Rivières. I don't know if they have less, less things or if it's just the same as Montreal, but we'll see. But first stop is get the uh, license renewed. Then after that, we go to the parking lot with all the different kind of chargers. And then from there, we'll go to Best Buy. All right, so we made it at the spot to renew the license. So I just gotta go out. It is raining right now, so I'll just run inside, renew the license, and then we can go out and explore the city. All right, so the license is renewed. Um, so now we just have to go explore the city, but I think I'm getting a little bit hungry, so I'm just gonna get something to eat first. And then from there, uh, we'll go look around. So I don't know what I wanna eat yet, so I'm probably just gonna drive around, see if there's some restaurants that I can uh, go into and just have a nice bite to eat. And then from there, I can uh, go to the chargers first because I really wanna see those. Last time I went, it was in, it was in the cold, uh, there was snow everywhere. This time it is raining, but it is better uh, conditions than before, but I'm really hungry. So let's go find something to eat real quick. I'm just gonna drive around because I'm not sure what I really want to eat. So hopefully I find something good. Right, so I decided to use the Tesla screen to tell me what to eat and there's a bunch of restaurants all around, but there's a lot of A&W restaurants in Trois-Rivières. And all the other options do seem good, but I'm probably just going to go with the A&W because uh, I know A&W and I know exactly what I like. So I'll just go with the A&W and I'll go with the closest one. So this one is a, a kilometer away. So I'll go to this one. And all yeah. right, so we got the food and now we're just going to go eat. All right, so I just finished eating and uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is go to the chargers and look at them, review them, talk about them. And then from there, I'm gonna go to Best Buy and then we can probably look around and go back home. All right, so I made it to the charger and there's a lot of EVs over here. So uh, I'm just gonna plug in to a level two charger and we're just gonna look around. All right, so I'm gonna plug into this flow charger using my electric circuit card. See if that works. 
Yep, so I can take it and plug it in. All right, so the car is plugged in and charging. So this is not gonna charge it too quick. It's just gonna be a little slow, but I'm just gonna look around here because there's an Ionic 5 right here um, charging and it looks really nice. And there's a bunch of Teslas over there. So a Tesla Model S and two Tesla Model 3s. And there's a Bolt EUV over here. And there's Bolt and the Tesla Model Y over there. All right, so we have a 100 kilowatt flow charger over here. We could have used this one. It has a Chatmo plug and a CCS plug over here. Hopefully they get to change this to the NACS plug soon. There's a 50 kilowatt over here. Same thing, Chatmo over here and CCS. And there's a minute pizza. So I'm assuming this is like a pizza vending machine. Um, yeah, and obviously the card reader is still not working. So I don't know what it is with these type of card readers. The Nayx is that what it's is, is that how you pronounce it? Nayx card readers. It does seem like these card readers are just bad. Um, so I would just suggest that people building chargers, machines, etc., do not use this card reader because it does seem that every time I see it, it doesn't work. And yeah, so here's another 50 kilowatt uh, flow charger. So the Chatmo and the CCS. And it does seem that this is a Mustang Maki. I like the color, the blue color of the Mustang Maki is beautiful. And uh, yeah, I, I hope everyone that gets a Mustang Maki either get the blue or the red one, not the gray or any other color. So this is a Chevy Bolt, an old Chevy Bolt, Tesla Model Y another old chevy bolt and this is a 100 kilowatt fast charger but also chatmo and ccs so let's look around so the 50 kilowatts they all have ccs and chatmo this chatmo does look a little bit different the chatmo plugs are just weird they look like laser guns from the future but it's old technology so hopefully we can get rid of these an Ionic 5 over there that's gonna charge. So yeah, there's a bunch of charges everywhere and it just looks great. So I love this. And look, that's my, that's my car right there. All EVs, a big parking lot full of EV charging. Um, we need something like this in Montreal, a big parking lot full of EV charging, fast, slow, medium charging. Yeah, so this is amazing. So this looks like a 2012 Tesla Model S and Tesla Model 3. I'm not sure what year, probably 2021. And this looks like a 2020 and later, um, or earlier, I should say, uh, Tesla Model S. But the Mustang Mach-E, oh my God, looks amazing. But yeah, so everywhere is full of chargers. And I forgot to mention there, there's like a Tesla charger down there which is not an official Tesla charger, but it is a Tesla charger nonetheless. Well, yeah, so we did our turn, but yeah, so we need this in Montreal for sure. We need a charging spot that has a bunch of chargers everywhere so people can just come and charge. People that live around can just come here, park their car here, leave it here without having to worry and without needing to have a parking spot straight at home. Obviously, if you live far from this area, then you wouldn't be able to really take advantage of it. But if you live near here, you can just leave your car here and charge it up and take it out. So it looks amazing and beautiful. And yeah, we do need this in Montreal. So this is a perfect spot for us to actually get a charger here. And see, there's a screen over there just showing you how the place works. But yeah, this is beautiful. A lot of people are transitioning to EVs. Um, obviously, when you want to get to EVs, there's a few factors that you have to uh, take into account. You have to make sure that you have home charging. That's one. Because without home charging, you're going to have to go to fast chargers all the time to charge it up. And the problem with that is that you're paying basically the same thing as gas prices when um, you're using fast chargers all the time. So you're not really saving on fuel. 
And that's one of the biggest factors on EVs is that you're saving money on fuel. But if you're going to fast chargers all the time, you're not saving that much money on fuel. Um, and also because if you do, if you do not have a, a home charge, uh, you have to use either public charging. Even if you use the slow public charging, you're gonna be uh, stuck with that charge with that charger, and it's not yours. So if, for example, it's being used and you really need to charge, then you're gonna be out of luck. And also, if it's not that close to your house, you're gonna have to go there all the time and have it charged there. It's gonna take hours for it to charge. You wanna make sure that it's really close to what you're uh, to where you live, and you wanna make sure that you prepare the time. Because, for example, if you have to go get up in the morning at 6 a.m. Uh, to drive somewhere and let's say it's eight o'clock in the evening you have to make sure that your charge doesn't finish too early because then you're just paying for nothing and you have to make sure that your charge doesn't finish too late because you have to get up and, and leave so there's a lot of coordination going on when it comes to um, public level two charging and it just doesn't make it convenient so another thing is that when you're buying an EV, you want to make sure that the car you're getting has battery preconditioning because without battery preconditioning, when it's going to be too hot outside or too cold and you're going to a charger, your car is not going to charge as fast as possible because the battery is either going to be too hot or too cold. So you want to make sure your car has battery preconditioning so that when you're going to chargers, you don't stay there for too long and it's not too much of a hassle for the battery to charge. Talking about battery preconditioning, you want to make sure that your car has good route planning because if you're going on a road trip, you want to make sure the car can know exactly when you have to stop to charge and how much you have, to, how long you have to stay at those chargers. So the car will automatically tell you stop here, stop here for you to charge. So like that, you don't have to worry about where, when do you have to stop a stop and charge and how long do you have to stop for. All right, so enough of that. We're at the Best Buy. So we're just gonna go in there, see what we can get, see if there's anything that we need to get. And uh, yeah, so let's go over there and look at what we can do today. <laughs> 